Now, having discussed LTL syntax, which allows us to write formulas, let us move on to discuss the semantics, which will allow us to evaluate, that is, give meaning to uh, the LTL formulas. To this end, a first important observation is that for LTL, we model time discreetly as the infinite stream of natural numbers, starting from zero and going into the future towards infinity. Now, to give meaning to LTL formulas, let us consider an infinite execution of some system which, for each point in time, reaches a given state. For every reach state, at every point in time, we assume to know which atomic propositions are true. Another way to say this is that we fix a labeling of each state with the atomic propositions that are true in that state. Now, LTL formulas are evaluated along this path. More precisely, for each LTL formula, we're able to state what it means for the formula to hold for this path. Here is how. If the formula is an atomic proposition, then it holds if it is true at the, uh, at the, current, at the current point in time, which is initially at the beginning of the path. So since we know about the atomic proposition, the truth value, we can establish this for uh, formulas that are atomic propositions themselves. The case of propositional collectives is treated as one would expect. For example, phi and psi holds if phi holds and psi holds. And similarly, phi or psi holds if phi holds or psi holds. The interesting case is of course that of the temporal connectives. Next phi holds if phi holds at the next point in time on the path. Eventually phi holds if phi holds either now or at some future point in time. Know the difference between next and eventually. The former asks phi to hold at the next point in time, whereas the latter uh, asks phi to hold either now or at some point in the future, not necessarily the next one. Moreover, always phi holds if phi holds now as well as at all points in the future. In other words, if phi holds always if we look forward on the path. Finally, let us see what it means for phi until psi to hold. It really means two things. First, that psi holds either now or at some point in the future. And second, that phi holds at all points before psi holds. So in particular, phi has to hold continuously until psi holds. Okay. Let us further illustrate the semantics with some examples. In what follows, let's assume that all predicate sounding words that we encounter, such as enabled, read, write, etc., are atomic propositions. In my later explanations, I will use further up in the future to mean at the current time or later. I mentioned this just to warn you that the phrase further up in the future will also include the current time. Here is a first simple example which says that enabled always holds, meaning it holds now and it will keep holding at all points in the future. You can see an illustrative picture of the situation where enabling, uh, where enabled must hold everywhere. So all the states have to be labeled in brown in this picture. Another example, this one says, always not read and write, which means that read and write can never hold at the same time. If we draw red, uh, if we draw read in brown and write in red, we see an il il uh, illustrative picture here. We may have brown label states and red label states, as well as states that do not have brown or red, but we cannot have states that are both brown and red labeled. Okay, so this is what it means always not read, always not read and write. Notice that the parentheses are very important in establishing the meaning of this formula. The next example says always eventually enabled holds. It is the pattern that we discussed in the introduction actually. It means that Considering each point in time, now or in the future, 
there is a point further up in the future where enable holds. For example, if we are here, we see that at a later point, point in time, namely this, enable holds. Okay? And similarly, if we are here, we see that at a later point in time, namely here, enable holds. And so on. This has to hold indefinitely on the entire infinite path in order for the property to hold. Another way to express this is that enable holds infinitely often. Indeed, as you traverse the path, it will be infinitely often uh, the case that one sees enable holding, uh, holding. The next example is somewhat dual, dual to the previous one, combining eventually and always in the other order. It says eventually always enable holds. In other words, either starting from now or from some time in the future, enable will start holding and will never stop holding, will keep holding, as it's shown in this picture. So from some point on, all states are labeled with brown. This is always eventually enabled. Note that eventually always is a stronger property than always eventually. Okay, now let's move on to the next example, which says always request implies eventually grant. Meaning that for any point in time we might choose, either the current, the current point or a future point, assuming request holds, there will surely be a point further up in the future where grant will hold. So if on the trace we label with red the states where request holds and with brown the points uh, the states where grant holds, we have that every red label state will be eventually followed by a brown label state. For example, this red label state is eventually followed by this brown label state. This red label state is followed by this brown label state. This uh, red label state is followed by this brown label state. And again, this has to hold uh, indefinitely throughout the, uh, the the entire path in order for the property uh, for this property to to be true. Okay. Very different from the above is the following variation, obtained by putting the parentheses differently. Okay, so we have for all request implies eventually grant this time. This means that if request holds for all points in time then grant holds for some point in time. It is a much weaker property than the previous one. Only in case all states have red labeling, only then it is required that some state has brown labeling, as shown into this, uh, 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 on this picture. Finally, here is an example evolving both until, uh, both, uh, uh, until and always. Always request implies request until grant. This means, for every point in the future, any presence of request implies a continuous presence of request that will lead to a grant. This example is a pattern representing a very persistent requester, if you will. The picture illustrates this phenomenon. We see that um, a request is started here, and then it keeps happening until a grant happens. And similarly, a request is started here, and it keeps happening until a grant happens. Okay, so we can have an entire block. So in this case, there are three requests until a grant happens. In this case, there are two requests until a grant happens. The property says that whenever we have a request, then there will be a block of requests leading to a grant. And this should be, again, the case throughout the entire tr trace for this formula to hold. Note that what the property does not say. The property does not say that requests keep coming infinitely often. It is allowed that at some point requests stop coming. All the formula says is that when a request comes, then there will be a sequence of requests that persists until, until a grant. Okay, this concludes our series of uh, illustrative examples. By the way, my advice is that whenever you want to make sense of what an LTL formula means, you try to draw such a diagram, which can clarify the situation in your mind.
Here is an exercise where you can practice this. You are given four formulas and are asked, among other things, to depict their meaning graphically in the way I did for the previous examples. These formulas are always request implies eventually grant, always eventually request, request implies always eventually grant, always eventually impl request implies grant, and always eventually always enabled. Another part of this exercise asks you to compare the meaning of this last formula always eventually always enabled with uh, that of eventually always enabled so removing one always from the beginning so the question is to explain any differences if if there exist <laughs>